Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a second look at my spot well that I showed in another video before. If you haven't seen the video where I spot well fuse wire on two 18650 cells then take a look up in the corner here and you will see that video. Today I'm basically going to show you how this machine looks inside. And I'm also going to mention a couple of things that you need to consider before buying this unit. So by taking a first glance on the machine from the side, what we notice here is this transformer. Does the transformer itself on the back side have a little bit of PCB here? That PCB is actually a solder joint where you can choose between 110 volt and 230 volt system. So that makes it possible to run this in the US market as well. And here we have a closer look at the markings itself. That's the solar joint where you can choose. What more we can see is that we have one of the outputs on the front here and that's the cables going in. We also have this output here on the front where you spot well your cells against this panel. And those wires are going out here. They are fine threaded wires and that's made for being able to bend several times in a row. And that's really really neatly done and they are very very soft. So that's really good. Another thing that we can see is the tensioning here that does the tensioning of this device here. And that's rather crude because that's just a matter of a screw pulling or dragging that um, spring up and down. And one problem here is that this spring will loosen this nut. And when that happens that nut will fall down here. So I recommend if you're going to use this spring pick this apart first and remove this nut and lock tight it into place because as you can see here it screws with me but if I lock this in place you will see that that screw is now actually redoing itself while doing this. So this is a, something that is a little bit negative. So if we take a look at the PCB here First of all we can see that this transformer is controlled by that MOSFET over there. Or if it is a trick or something else I'm not really sure. But that is the one actually controlling the transformer and in that sense turning it on and off. The small cables you see here going back into the transformer is actually what I can see a thermistor that is measuring the temperature and have protection for that part and that's really good. This board here is controlled or driven directly by the input itself and somewhere most likely there is some kind of reduction of the power down to a, a decent level so the circuitry can be run. What's also notable or can be found here is that there is no actual current control on this system. What it does if we go to the other side. So what you have here, this put here determines the length of the pulse. And this one determines the number of pulses in a row that is done. So it's a rather simple device, but it do work. The next thing you need to consider is that this device needs a lot of power to be driven. Especially on the startup. And the reason for that is because how this is connected up, this MOSFET here will actually be driving current or power into this transformer on the startup until you have electricity enough in it. And with that said, that's why you are generating a big spike on the startup. I do like the device, it works really really great, it's rather powerful as well, but there are a couple of things that you need to consider before buying this. So a couple of points that you need to consider. First of all, as I said before, it rushes in a huge amount of current on the startup and the machine is very very power hungry. So if you're going to buy this make sure you have proper fusing. I do recommend a 16 amp slow blow fuse. It do work on 10 and 13 if you have slow blow as well in some cases. Secondly is regarding this one here and also if you are spot welding here. If you do not press firmly against the cell itself you're going to spot well, this will spark and it will spark a lot. Especially on fake nickel strips. Third, when spot welding cells for instance start low and go upwards, 
because if you go too high from the beginning you will easily weld through or make holes in the cell. So do not start on 8 pulses and on a 7 because then you will have a big huge hole in the cell. Start low and go up. So guys, what do I think about the device? I like the device a lot. It's very very uncomplicated. It's actually very very close to simple stuff where you can build with a microwave oven transformer. It's the same idea that I would have been doing if I built this myself. But it's pre-built and I like it. For spot welding 18650 cells it works really really good. It works also for spot welding fuse wire as I did in another video. And if you want to buy this take a look down below. I will have links to the seller that I bought this from and the cheapest one on eBay currently. So if you want to do that check out those links, buy one and hopefully it will work as good for you as it did for me. I have done, I don't know, uh, several packs with it. I have most likely spot welded five, six hundred points or even more right now. Um, when it comes to fuse wire, I have spot welded at least 1500 cells or something. So, so far this have worked really great for me. But there have been issues reported on the web as well. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please feel free to do that. If you want to support my work, check out the links below for buying the equipment. Check out the link for Patreon and Paypal as well. If you do think this is a good channel, do not forget to share the channel among your friends and colleagues or whoever you want. And let's make the channel grow. Thank you once again and I'll see you next time. Bye.